Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about some division. We know that we had talked about division a little bit yesterday, and we, yesterday we had divided a few digits by a single digit divisor. And so today what we're going to be doing is going to be building on that and then moving into um, our actual fifth grade standard. So the standard for fifth grade is to be able to divide a four digit dividend by a two digit divisor. So for right now, go ahead and fill out the heading on your paper, please. I know that the copy is a little bit messed up today, so you can see that this should say your name, the date, our homeroom, and our big goal. So this is Mr. Wilson. The date is 525, not 523. <coughs> Our homeroom, OSU, and our big goal, we know, is to get that 46% or higher mastery on the CAS. Can I get a scholar to remind me why, what, what does it take? What is it, what is it, why are we, why are we shooting for this 46% or higher on the CAS, Mariah? Because if we get 46% or higher, then we can get best in the yeah, right. Maybe that 46% wouldn't quite put us there, but that 46% or higher is going to make us work towards our bigger goal of becoming the best school in the city, right? And the best school in the country. And so that 46% or higher is what we're shooting for every day. What's your goal for your exit ticket score today? What's your goal for your exit ticket score, Lenny? 80% or higher. And why, do, why do we want to get an 80% or higher, Clifton? So we can meet on every single uh, exit ticket we take. Yeah, exactly, because we know that each exit ticket is going to be talking about a particular standard, and so when we get to 80% or higher, it makes us help, uh, or it helps us to go even further. Okay, so um, what I need now is, uh, let me get a scholar to read the objective for today, please. Read that objective for me, please, Antonio. All students will be able to solve four digits. By two digit division questions using long division. Exactly. So we're going to solve this using long division. We're going to solve these four digit by two digit questions using long division. And tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit about some division area models and using arrays. But for today we're just talking about this long division. But first, before we do that, let me somebody help me out. Like, why do we care about learning how to divide? Why is this important? When are you going to use this sort of skill in your life, Michaela? And uh, life. Well, sure, but like when? Like, give me an example of when you would need to use division, Damon. In class. <laughs> okay, yeah, obviously in class, yeah. Uh, Faith. Like, if you work at McDonald's, you have to divide so much stuff. Ticket. Okay, so maybe if you have to divide the amount of something into something else, right? You probably wouldn't use long division for that. But what? What else? Uh, you might be at the store and you need to. Uh, pay a price and you'll have to go over some division. Sure, okay, so what you're saying is really great. So like Mariah's saying that you would have to use this at the store potentially, right? And she, you wouldn't probably have to divide it up for when you're at the register to actually pay. But think about this. Let's say you want to throw a party, Mariah, right? So you want to throw a party. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to Mariah's party because it's about to be off the chain. I'm going to love this party. You going? Yeah. So that's two people. You going? Yeah. That's three people. You going? Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we got fifteen people going to this party, right? But let's say when we're at this party, Mariah decides that she wants to go all out, right? So we got fifteen people going to this party, and she's gonna buy a ridiculous amount of stuff for this because she wants it to be the best party ever. So let's say Mariah decides she's gonna spend two thousand dollars on this party stuff, but all she asks is, if you're gonna go to the party, will you split the cost with her, right? And we know that division, when you're doing a division problem, it's taking a number and it's splitting it into equal groups, right? So while you probably won't have to spend, probably won't have to split the cost of a $2,000 party, that's a perfect example of when you would use this in real life, right? You'd spend $2,000 and divide it up 15 ways, right? So that's our four digit Dividend divided by our two-digit divisor, which leads us right into our um, work right here. So the number being divided, the number being divided, is that your dividend, your divisor, or your quotient? Remember, yesterday we were talking about those big three vocabulary words. Is Which of this one is, is, the, is the number being divided called? Is that your dividend, your divisor, or your quotient? Michaela? Dividend. It's your dividend. Go ahead and write that in. The number being divided is called your dividend. 
and you can remember that, right, because the dividend goes in, right? So when you're, when you're writing your division problem, the dividend goes in. <coughs> And then what is the number doing the dividing called? Is that your dividend, your divisor, or your quotient? Marcel? Divisor. Yeah, it's your divisor, right? So the divisor is going to be the one that splits it up. So think about it like if you were the one that's doing something. If, like a refrigerator refrigerates, right? It's a refrigerator because it does refrigeration, right? A divisor is a divisor because it does division. It's the one that's actually saying split it up. So your divisor goes on the outside. And then obviously that means that the answer to a division question is called a what? Quotient. A what? Quotient. Quotient. So go ahead and write that up at the top. Okay, now let's talk about some steps for division. We went over this yesterday, but today it's going to be really important that we go back over these. Because when you get to your independent practice, you're not going to have me standing there. You're not going to take a test with me. I'm not going to be able to take this CAS test with you at the end of the school year. You're going to be raising your hand, and you're going to be saying, Mr. Wilson, how do I solve this? And I'm going to say, try your best. Right? So you need to know these steps. So someone read me step number one for a division. Read that first step for me, please. Loud and proud, Clifton. Uh the first number goes inside the sign. The second number goes outside it. Perfect. That's a bonus. Uh, read me my second step, please. Damon. Make a T-chart with at least five multiples in it. More if necessary. Yeah, you might have to add more. Thank you. That's a participation bonus. Mariah, read me that third step. Divide, find your quotient, multiply, subtract. Bring down the next digit in your dividend and do it all again until you reach there. Perfect, that's a bonus. Now the whole class, you already know you want to sing this song right now. So let's help me out, right? So what are the steps? For once you once you got that number set, once you got that problem set up, Ricardo, you okay, man? You look a little bit sleepy. You good? All right. So once you got that problem set up and you got that T-chart, then your steps for division are to divide, divide. find your quotient, multiply, subtract, Bring it down the next digit and you did it then. Do it all again till you reach the end. One more time. Divide. Find your quotient. Multiply. Subtract. Bring down the next digit and you did it then. Do it all again till you reach the end. Perfect. Okay, so let's take a look at example number one here, okay? So I know that my, I'm going to leave my steps printed up there, okay? So I know that the first number, let me refocus this for you for a second. I know that the first number in my problem is going to be going inside the sign, right? Because inside the sign, that's my dividend, right? That's the number that's being divided. So I'm going to set my problem up like I would for my long division. I'm going to take my first number, 1,215, and I'm going to put it inside my sign. And then I'm going to take my second number, this divisor, and put it on the outside, 27. Okay, so now my problem is set up, right? I've got it all the way that I need to. Now, when I'm thinking about solving this question, I don't know about you, but off the top of my head, I don't know what the multiples of 27 are, right? So I can figure it out pretty quickly if I think about it, but in order to be able to organize my thoughts, I'm gonna go ahead and make my T-chart, right? Our second step is to make a T-chart with five multiples. So I'll make my T-chart with five. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply. So 1 times 27 is 27. 27 times 2. So I got 7 times 2 is 14. Here my 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5. So I'm going to get 54. 27 times 3. So 3 is 21. 3 times 3 is 6 plus 2. is 28. 8, D1. Seven times four. And thirty five. Okay. So then I have my little T chart uh, here and filled out. Okay, so once I have my T-chart, I know that my steps are to divide, find my quotient, multiply, subtract, bring down the next digit, and do it all again. You reach the end. I know that that's the case. <laughs> right, exactly. So when I'm doing this, what do I need to be asking myself when I'm going through this? Just like we did yesterday, what's the first thing you ask yourself about this 27 and this 1,215? Before I, before you answer that question, I'm sorry, I'm asking multiple questions at the same time. Please forgive me, Marcel. Please don't. Get mad. You're mad. I can tell. <laughs> okay. Am I going to take 27 and try to put it into 1,215 all together at one time? No. No. So what am I going to ask first, Mariah? If you could put 
27 into 1. And can I? No. Why not? Because 1 is less than 27, and you can't put a greater number into a less than 3. That's a perfect example, or that's a perfect explanation. She said because 1 is smaller than 27, and so you can't put a bigger number inside of a smaller one. So then what am I going to ask myself next? What am I going to ask myself next? Lene? If you can fit 27 into 12. Can you? No. no. And somebody in the back. Somebody in the back. What, uh, what, about, what am I going to ask myself next? Yeah? Mm, not quite. What am I going to do, Michaela? Um, you're going to um, find the biggest number that could go with going to um, 121 without going over. Yeah, I'm going to find the biggest, not just the biggest number, right? Because I could find, I could think of a lot of numbers that go into 121, but the biggest multiple of 27, right? So then I'm going to go down and see. There are my teacher are 27, that's smaller. 54, that's smaller. 81, that's smaller. 108, that's smaller. 135, that's bigger, right? So I'm going to go back down one on my T-chart, and I'm going to put a four here. And my quotient, right? So I divide, I find my quotient. Remember, the left side of your T-chart is always going to tell you what your quotient is, and then your right side is going to be what you then need to subtract, right? Because we already did that multiplication. So, oops, oh, put 188. Closing. Yep, you're right, closing. I know, man. I know, I caught it. Sorry. Sorry. So then you got to subtract. So I'm going to do 1 minus 8, and that gives me 7, right? No. Oh, no. why not, Antonio? Because um, 1 is less than 8. 1 is less than 8, so what do you have to do? Go ahead and borrow, so take that 2 and make it a 1. Make that 1 and 11. So 11 minus 8 is going to give you 3. 1 minus 0 is going to give you 1. And 1 minus 1 gives you nothing, right? So then we're going to bring down the next digit in your dividend and do it all again until you reach the end. Now I can see that I'm at the end here, right? I'm at the last digit of my dividend. So now I've got to ask myself, how many times can 27 fit inside of 135? How many times can 27 fit inside of 135? 